We're down here in the paddock with trainer and driver Charlie Norris. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. You know, when I hear that name, it's a very famous name. Do you ever use it, you know, to, to get a seat at a restaurant, Chuck Norris? Yeah, you want to, but, you know, you, you say that if they ask you, and they go, you say, yeah, yeah, sure. And, uh, and then when you show up, you get the table in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and the wait staff is like, that's not Chuck Norris. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about you, obviously, um, and your experience. You have a stable here at Pocono, but also out at the Meadows. Share um, a little bit about where your, your barn is and who you have in it. Uh, you know, we got 25 at the Meadows and we got uh, 15 here and kind of we got a lot of New York bred so they're mostly here and we got some of our race horses here and Forever Ivy, she's one of the top, you know, Phillies and Mares races she goes in and uh, that's about really the only pacer we got and then we got a bunch of trotters and, you know, young trotters so we're just, wherever they go, that's where we go. What do you enjoy about working with young trotters? You know, it's such a fulfillment, you know, uh, you know, watching them, just like watching kids grow up and everything, you know, uh, they go from one step to the other and, uh, you know, when they win that first stake race, and you know, it's it's exciting. How do you know when there's something special? Well, I mean, you think uh, and hope the whole time you're training them down, you know, that you really got something special, but really, uh, I don't know, you, you really hope, but... When you when you put them behind the gate the first time and you hit the seven eighths pole and you pull in that right line, if there's nothing there, you're you, it, it's just a terrible feeling in your stomach because you were wrong. <laughs> what about breeding? Um, when you're getting these horses when they're young, how important is um, their bloodline? It's it very important. I mean, trotters nowadays. I mean, they're a lot easier uh, to work with and get them gated and stuff like that. When I was growing up, I mean, it was terrible. It'd be three, four months before a horse was even gated. But now, you know, it, it, it's bred into them, and you know, if you, they got to be out of a good mare, you know, you'll get the usual freak, uh, you know, that might be okay. But uh, you know, definitely the dam side is a, is very got to be very strong. It has to be very rewarding, though, knowing that, you know, you were the one who kind of, you know, trained them, and to have one that's very successful has to be a great feeling. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, there, there's nothing like it. And this winter we trained in the south, and uh, I've always wanted to do that. But, uh, you know, with raising a family and stuff, you kind of wait till they get out of the house, and we decided to go to Spring Garden Ranch this year. And, uh, you know, so far it's uh, paid off. We've uh, qualified, I don't know, 11 or 12 trotters. Uh, you know, it looks pretty good. So with around 40 horses, what is your routine and your schedule like, especially being between uh, two places? Well, yeah, I mean, fortunately, if it raced uh, different days, it would be great. But, you know, the Meadows is usually in the afternoon, and we got a great crew at both places. And, uh, you know, wherever the, right now, wherever the stake race is at, that's usually where I'm close to. So driving and training, is there one you enjoy more than the other, or when do you decide to, you know, do the driving yourself, and when do you hand it off? Well, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of times I can't go, so when the babies start racing, I let usually let somebody else drive the three-year-olds or, you know, even the age horses, you know, you need a break once in a while, but I enjoy driving the baby trotters, you know, it doesn't matter, so. Yeah. So you mentioned family. Do you have anybody following in your footsteps? Yeah, my uh, oldest son, uh, he drives a little bit. He uh, he works with the horses there. And, uh, you know, we, we got a uh, race coming up Saturday uh, at the Meadow, father and son race. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be gunning for me in that one. <laughs> what is that like racing against family? I always enjoy asking people this question because I would be a nervous wreck, but you seem kind of cool as a cucumber. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't bother me that much. I'm sure... Uh, you know, it's exciting for him, and I'm sure he wants to beat me more than he does anyone. <laughs> That's true. You're right. He might be gunning for you. Um, so I was going to ask you a few off-the-cuff questions now, just to get to know you a little bit better. Um, I wanted to ask you about your colors. I understand you're third generation. So uh, did you take cues from, from your father and grandfather, or did you come up with them on your own? No, these are my grandfather's colors uh, that I drive in. Who knows? That was... Uh, he was old when I uh, when I was born, so they've been around for a long time. Growing up in the business, was there ever any doubt? You know, thought that you might do something else at any point in time? No, not at all. And uh, luckily, uh, my mother uh, that I graduated high school because uh, I probably wouldn't even have graduated if it wasn't <laughs> for her because that's all I'd done ever since I was little. Just kind of pushing you through. Um, if you could, do you follow any other sports? 
Yeah, I mean, I follow basketball, arena football, and my brother-in-law coaches, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. So if you were to play basketball, what's the one team that you would want to play for? <sighs> oh, man, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love college basketball. I mean, the pros are okay, but college basketball, I mean, you know, yeah. growing up, everyone wanted to play for Ohio State, so, you know, that's where I'm from, so, you know, right. you got to be a Buckeye. You'd have to go back to school for that one. Yeah, I don't think I'd make it there. <laughs> Mom would be real happy. What about um, your favorite meal? Uh, I'd have to say fish. Okay, and what do, you, what do you drinking alongside that fish? Oh, Mick Alter, you know, <laughs> it goes with everything. If you had a superpower, what do you think it would be if you could be superhuman in any way? To see into the future. That Ooh. would be cool. I've been getting some good ones lately. <laughs> I really like that one. Um, and what about mentors or idols? Anybody out there that when you were coming up in the business that you really look up to? Yeah, um, my father-in-law, Billy Herman. I mean, you know, it was a big fan of his for a long time. Uh, you know, my father knew him, and, uh, you know, we're very close now. And, uh, of course, Chuck Sylvester, I mean, was a great friend of mine. So those two people probably the most. Well, thank you so much, Charlie, for taking the time to do the interview. We're happy to have you here. Good luck this season, and hopefully we can catch up with you again. All right. Thank you. <laughs>